Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. Our ongoing study in the Church Dogmatics by Carl Bart. We're looking at uh, Volume 4 or Section 4, The Doctrine of Reconciliation. We have moved into Paragraph 71, The Vocation of Man or the Doctrine of Clasis. We've already looked at the uh, first lesson in Clasis, which is always a lesson concerning structure. And now Professor Bart wants to take us into a lesson to discuss the comprehensive concept of Clasis. The comprehensive qualifying concept of Clasis, which for Professor Bart is illumination. So what he wants to do, he wants to look at the work of illumination in the call of Christ. The work of illumination in the call of Christ. Because illumination is the defining comprehensive concept of the Clasis call of Christ. We'll look at it in three moments, but we're going to be taking a look at the uh, work of illumination. And it will run from uh, 123 to 147. So uh, not a lengthy essay, but uh, gives us a great deal of content, as usual with Professor Bart. He packs a lot of content into just a few pages. Let's begin by looking at Block 1, Clasis Call as Event. There are nine aspects of Clasis as the let there be moment of those latent factors of the kingdom. First, the Clasis Call is a temporal event, but comes down from heaven, comes down from above. Encounter is given priority because Bart says, Clasis call can never be taken as abstract notion. You can't just separate it out as abstract notion. Because, uh, see, it is an event of enlightenment, an event that inaugurates a new history for the believer. It is the continuum event of a determinate revelation from Christ, which creates the intersecting point as a time of grace, and a place of salvation history. So the revelation in Christ, the word of Christ, as Clasis call, creates a word event, an encounter, which uh, creates the time of grace and a place of salvation history. It comes down from above as the advent, as parousia, as the advent of promise. It is the parousia of promise. And it applies the persuasive word of let it be to the emerging latent factors of the kingdom that we face in our situation. So it is a powerful, persuasive, creative moment and a creative encounter. It awakens us to the call to be noticed by those latent factors themselves. And then number nine, it is the interpenetration of our finite circumstance by the spiritual sphere, the Uranus heaven, of the Lord who comes down in his encountering word to create word event, because he is, Jesus is Christ is the Kyrios Lord, exalted as the exalted Son of Man to the right hand of the Father. Now note too, Clasis is an event of correspondence between the psychical and the physical. It's based on three modalities, and number one is plan, the Father's intentionality is that internal plan of election that takes place internally within the Trinity, that prothesis we talked about that takes place within the Trinity, that uh, prothesis plan of salvation within the Father. Second, its purpose, it's the promise of spirit which awakens man's knowledge to reconciliation, the promise of reconciliation. And third, it is power, the call of Christ word creates the power of new being, the power of the let there be actualization of those latent factors of the kingdom that are present in our situation and the latent factors of new birth within our own life. So it is a, a call of plan, purpose, and power. Now there are six aspects of encounter and correspondence to become what Bart says the Clasis call is always, 100% of the time, 
a spiritual process. It takes place in temporal finitude, but the Klesis call is always a spiritual process. It is parousia pneumatikos. It is spiritual advent. It is a call through the power of the gospel. And it is, here's key, it is fundamentally the power of the illuminating truth. It is an encounter of illumination. It is a truth which cannot be separated from the person of Christ, which we've already discussed. In the Klesis event, Christ is the acting subject, the Kalon, the acting subject of the event. He calls us in the right way. He makes possible our subjective experience. Christ, as the one who calls, is the contemporary man speaking among us in his empowering word through his rhema voice. So from here, let's look at our little inserted triad in the first block. We begin with a Klesis call as that creative let it be, which encounters humanity. And then we are um, encountered with the promise of spirit, which awakens us and reveals the latent factors of the kingdom in our situation. It gives us the eyes to see, the ears to hear. That creates the realm of the Holy Spirit, which is the parousia pneumatikos, or the advent of the word of Christ takes place. The kingdom advances through our covenant partnership with Christ as Lord. Our partnership with Christ as Lord, our participation in the kingdom through Christ as Lord, creates this parousia pneumatikos, the spiritual advent of the kingdom. That will move us on to block two. And in block two, we want to take a look at the form and the concepts of Clasis event. Now that we've looked at uh, the event of illumination, and now that we understand the Clasis call of Christ for Bart as an event of illumination, what can we say about form? What can we say about concepts to articulate this belief? If that is what we believe, and, it, and if it cannot be abstract notion, then how do we articulate it authentically according to Professor Bart? And he has something very specific and powerful to say about that. First of all, he brings up what we currently face. Number one, modern theology is demonstrated in Holas' abstract approach to defining Clasis in nine abstract stages or nine abstract concepts. It is one, the call to the church. It is illumination. It is conversion. It is regeneration. It is justification. It is mystical union with the Trinity. It is sanctification. It is preservation of holiness. It is the final eschatological state of living in the glory, the doxa glory of God. Bart responds to this abstracting out of the notion of the truth of the call of Christ by giving us the axioms of his criticism. Number one, Christ's Clasis call cannot be abbreviated, cannot be compressed into an abstract system. That must be negated. Two, Clasis can only be understood as a totality, which is understood through the comprehensive concept of illumination. We apply one comprehensive concept, and that is the comprehensive concept of illumination. Therefore, Bart can't just criticize, he has to, if he's going to negate the abstract presentation, what is, the, what is his positive affirmation? That's going to be note three, Bart's reformed description of Clasis in six moments of illumination. The six moments of illumination. And he begins with um, photizo, which is the word of Christ as the light which shines down on all of humanity. But two, that becomes photismos, which is the word of Christ shining upon someone in particular, upon an a particular individual. And then three, we have Christ's word becoming consciously known by that individual, by that called out one. Fourth, we have spiritual vision being opened up in order to see the latent factors of the kingdom. Five, uh, the individual's enslavement to darkness is healed as he becomes a Christian, 
with this new power of new being with new vision and spiritual insight. That leads to six phosphoros, which is the individual is now a bearer of the infused light of Christ. We become as believers those who bear the light of Christ. And then note four, Bart tells us that Clasis becomes concrete as deliverance, concrete as translation. We are delivered out of darkness in Ephesians and 1 Peter. We are translated from the power of Diabolos to the power of God. So we have a second inserted triad. So we know from block one that we're looking at an event of illumination. What does that mean in, in a concrete incarnate way? Well, if we look at our inserted triad in block two, it means looking at uh, the three comprehensive concepts of fotidzo, fotismas, and phosphoros. Fotidzo, fotismas, and phosphoros. We've got the light shining down on all persons, the light shining within the particular called out believer, and then the indwelling, bearing of the word of Christ as the light which dwells within us and informs our historical existence. So we move from fotidzo to fotismas to phosphoros. From fotidzo, general illumination, to fotismas, incarnate particular illumination for the separated art believer, and then phosphoros, infusion of the spirit within the believer. So now we've had a chance to look at Clasis call as event, Clasis call as threefold illumination. We shall now move on to block three and take a look at uh, how that becomes actualized. So if we look at block three, we're going to look at uh, the creative event and the illumination, the incarnate illumination, both inform a practical relevance for us as believers. We become phosteres, and phosteres are light-giving bodies. That's the Greek translation. We become those who bear and give off and present and proclaim the light of Christ. We become phosteres, light-giving bodies. So if you look at note one as phosphoros, bearers of Christ's light, we take up Philippians 2.15 and become phosteres and cosmo, illuminators in the world. We become the bearers of Christ's word and we become illuminators in the world by a process in First Peter of proclaiming the excellences of the Lord, which is uh, ex angelo, arete, because of our advancement in saving knowledge through Christ because of our having been delivered out of the darkened realm of Noema sign model positing. We've been delivered out of our darkness. We've got new eyes, new vision. And because of our participation in Christ's history, which is the theater of his doxa glory. So if you look to the right, we do have... Er, if you look within block three, we do have an inserted triad of uh, beginning with phosphoros as being the ones who bear the illuminating word of Christ. As believers, we bear the illuminating word of Christ. But then but when we bear this light and then we proclaim it as we identify and point out the latent factors of the kingdom in our history. That creates the reality of our becoming fosteres and cosmo, we become illuminators in the world of the kingdom of God. We participate in the theater of Christ's glory. We are the illuminators of the living word of Christ, and we bear that to the world. We uh, thereby participate in the kingdom of God. Bart closes out with four closing axioms that are important to this position. Christ call is always immediate clasis through the Holy Spirit without human mediation. The clasis call is always an external encounter by the strangeness of Christ and his humiliation and his exaltation, but it is also an internal encounter 
of the work of the Holy Spirit creating the new man. And then four, Clase's call is a once-for-all event with a sequence of further callings. So he does proclaim that once-for-all event of salvation, but it is followed up with further vocational callings. And then five, the Clase's call is not restricted to the realm of the noema, but instead addresses the entire self, the entire person, including our motivational base. It's always immediate. It is always an external encounter and then an internal work of the Spirit. It is once for all, followed by further vocational callings, and it encounters and implicates the entire human being, the entire person. The Word of Christ wants to illumine, illuminate and transform the entire human being as believer so we can participate in the kingdom as the theater of the doxa glory of Christ. So our first lesson in paragraph 71 gave us the structure of the doctrine of Clasis and now we have had a chance to look at the comprehensive concept of illumination which articulates Clasis. The singular comprehensive concept of illumination defines Bart's position. And that's going to wrap up uh, this lesson, and next time we'll pick up on page 148.